It's light and hoppy, it's bold and malty, it's pale and powerful. Today, we're drinking Python IPA. Hi guys, it's Jim here with another episode of Beers of the British Isles. On today's episode, we're drinking Python IPA from Little Valley Brewery. Now this beer is a 6%, bit of a biggie, uh, English IPA, uh, bear that in mind. Um, the brewery described this as inescapable, which makes it the most threatening beer I've ever had. Uh, now, I don't have a lot of information about the malt bill on this one. In fact, I have no information about the malt bill on this one. Um, so I'll kind of sort of backtrack a bit, I guess. If you think about uh, what an English style IPA is, it's kind of like a, a crisp, clean beer with a lot of bitterness and a little bit of hop uh, aroma. Uh, but the malt profile of that is typically um, on the kind of breadier side of things. So I'm imagining this beer has kind of, uh, I mean, if it is an English style RPA, probably Marisotta, maybe Pale Malt, maybe even Golden Promise uh, as the base malt. There's probably a little bit of Munich in there and maybe 10% or so, uh, a very light crystal just to give it uh, a touch of sweetness. Um, that's my predictions. If anybody knows, um, either let me know that I got it right or maybe stay quiet on that one. Uh, just kidding. Um, the hops, however, the hops, uh, everyone's favorite ingredient in an English IPA. And um, this, uh, they say that it's uh, double hopped, but it has four hops in it. So I'm guessing they use two and then two more later on. I don't know. Um, yeah, so uh, so double hopped, like I say, um, whatever that means. Um, and the hops kind of split up into almost two styles. We have the English hops, um, you know, English IPA, remember, um, and New Zealand hops, two of each. So uh, the English hops, we have Fuggles and First Gold. Um, so, you know, nice kind of floral uh, English hops rather than sort of the spicy piney ones um, and then the New Zealand hops we got a couple of big hitters uh, Pacific Gem not such um, not such a, a famous hop but it kind of sits well in this sort of English style that we're talking about because it's sort of on the rather than being on the tropical side it's sort of a little bit more floral and subdued uh, than other New Zealand hops are and in this beer we have Kind of the hop that started it all uh, in Britain, anyway, the craft beer scene. We have Nelson Sovan. Um, so that's, you know, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty tall order there that we have going on in the hop profile. Um, so what I'm imagining is what I just said earlier. Malt profile, maybe a little bit on the bready side. Um, if that's not the case, that's not a big deal. That's maybe just how I like my English IPAs um, on cask where there's a bit less carbonation. Um, the hops, I don't really know what to expect. It has to be bitter, it, it has to be bitter. Um, but with those four hops, double hopped um, mysteriously, um, it could be anything. There's only one way to find out what it is. Let's crack it open. Okay, we are in the glass, nice and cold. Uh, guys, I have a confession to make. I've just realized that this beer is bottle conditioned. Um, I pass no comment on that. Um, that's entirely up to the brewery. Um, I've made my views on that clear in the past. Um, yeah, I've kind of broken the rule here. Uh, the beer has been stored upright over the weekend. Uh, so most sediment is at the bottom. However, I guess at one point or another, this beer was not stored upright, and so you can sort see of, sort uh, of uh, little traces, little of, traces yeast. of yeast there in the top. Uh, 
that's probably not gonna make a difference. In fact, if it makes it into the beer, that doesn't even make a difference either. Um, like I say, you know what I think about bottle conditioned beers. Uh, the brewery seem to like them, so that's good. Now, let's have a look at this. Uh, the head has kind of faded away a little bit uh, as I've been rambling about um, bottle conditioning. That's okay, because it was quite strong when I poured it in, so um, let's not blame the brewery on that one. Uh, the color of this beer is quite, uh, quite nice real kind of um, vibrant gold color, um, as all the beers seem to be uh, lately. Um, yeah, like a quite a nice vibrant gold color, very good carbonation. Um, like I said, with these English, I, with these English, with these new English IPAs, um, with an English IPA, you can get away with a little bit more color and you can get away with a little bit more malt flavor. I won't say flavor, uh, malt flavor. Um, so what you end up with English IPAs is this real nice um, sort of pleasant looking beer that's kind of just a little bit of a change from what you might get. Um, this isn't super hazy, uh, in fact it's it's kind of clear, I think that some of that sediment might have made it in there so I'm not going to uh, judge on that, um, but all in all very good looking. Ah uh, yes, the aroma is very very very, very Nelson-y. Um, so with that, you have that kind of uh, spiky, tropical uh, aroma. I'm gonna be honest, that's kind of blasting everything out of the way. So, I mean, what is a spiky, tropical aroma? Um, something I've made up. No, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's very tropical fruity. So not even, imagine like a pineapple if it wasn't sweet. So imagine a pineapple flavor, but without that kind of accompanying uh, sweetness, there's actually a bit of a sharp edge to it. That's what this is. It's really, really good. Um, really, uh, really nice. I would say there's perhaps a guava edge to it, but um, when you have Nelson Sauvin in there, uh, Nelson Sauvin is uh, named because it has a, a Sauvignon Blanc um, kind of appeal to it, uh, kind of a character to it. and. Maybe that's what I'm smelling there with that with this spikiness that I keep going on about and uh, embarrassing myself with. Ooh, that is lovely. My word, that is a that is a real, 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 real nice beer. And that's the end of the review. No, um, so the the hop, the hop flavors that you taste. If I'm honest, it's a little bit. It's under bitter for what I was imagining. It's not that crisp and sharp like I thought it was going to be. Um, when you first drink it, it's almost chocolatey in the way that. Um, so on some of my uh, homebrew videos, I've talked about adding just a dash of chocolate malt to lagers and things. Not to make them darker, not to make them chocolatey, but you get this almost like a, almost like a, it, it's something to bounce the, the dryness off, if that makes sense. It's just, it stands there almost as a pillar in the middle of the beer, just to compare everything to. And it's really, really lovely. So it, it's, it is malty, but not in a very obvious way. It's kind of like the malt profile actually comes across as chocolatey. The hops that you're tasting is completely different from that spikiness that I just said. Um, man, yeah, that malt bill's amazing. Um, so the hop flavors that you're getting are more like uh, stone fruit, um, peach, uh, not plum, so yeah peach and guava and, um, and things like that. Um, there is a subtle kind of sharp tropical note to the back of it, but all in all, this beer is just smooth sailing. Now, the brewery that make this smooth sailing beer are Little Valley uh, Brewery, um, on the label right there at the front. 
Um, they were founded in 2005. Their, their overall kind of motto is great beer runs deep. Um, I don't know whether that means you have to have a pint of it or whether it means something else. Uh, but I kind of like, it's kind of one of those things where you sort of like, yeah, sounds like a cool thing to say. Um, now, the owners of this brewery uh, met in Kathmandu, uh, which is a far cry from Cragvale, West Yorkshire, where the brewery is based. Um, yeah, they met in Kathmandu, um, where they cycled to. They cycled to Kathmandu, and then they still had enough energy to start a brewery once they got there. Um, I don't think we're dealing with regular people here. I think these are special individuals that started this brewery. Um, I believe it's a um, it's a male female um, pair that, that started the business. I'm not sure if they're a couple or not. Uh, that doesn't matter, of course. Um, but yeah, um, the pair started the brewery back in 2005. Uh, when I first looked into this, I mean, I'm always doing this. I'm always making massive uh, sweeping judgments and then changing my mind later on. Uh, but when I first kind of saw their website, I thought they were kind of that guy a little bit. Um, like I said, they have all these kind of terms like, you know, uh, great beer runs deep and um, the most important ingredient in our beer is people and, and uh, you know, beer to keep you going. Um, and I mean, if they keep me going all the time, I'll I'll drink more of it. But, you know, they had a guy with a hand tattoo on the on the front page. And at first I kind of thought they were trying to, they were going a little bit too hard in the paint with the, with the coolness, the cool factor. Um, but having read a little bit more, I just think that they believe in it. I think that that's just them and that it's not fake because that's what that's what you worry about when you see stuff like that. You worry that it's someone pretending to be something that they're not. And I don't think these guys are. I think these guys are very genuine. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm not sure if they have a tap room or not, but um, West Yorkshire, my old stomping grounds, I'll definitely come to visit them uh, sometime in the future. Okay then, let's sum this one up. Let's uh, let's charm Python IPA. It's probably the worst uh, one of those I've ever done. Um, so the beer itself, like I say, it looks great. It's bottle conditioned. I didn't know that. That's not their fault. Um, it looks great. Lovely gold color. The head is very very nice. Like I say, good carbonation, sort of just replenishing that head as you go along. Um, I have filled my glass up, by the way, with the with the rest of the beer. This isn't just a continuity error. Um, yeah, so it looks great. It looks pretty damn good, actually. Um, I'm, I'm quite enjoying uh, the appearance of this one. Yeah, the aroma is, uh, like I say, spiky, tropical. Uh, pineapple without the sweetness, I think I tried to uh, sum it up with. Um, I really should start drinking these beers before the episode so that I know what I'm going to say. Um, but that's, you, you get it. It's kind of that sharp, tropical fruit. Um, edge to the aroma. The, the flavors are really good. Like, you know, aside from, you know, critiquing it, it's a re it's a really nice beer. Um, as always, now that it's warmed up, I'm getting a little bit more of a, of a grassiness uh, from the hops. Uh, I was wondering earlier what they'd done with uh, with the Fuggles and the Pacific Gem and the first gold because all I was really getting in there was Nelson Sovan. Um, but I guess they're coming through there uh, with a little bit of spiciness and a little bit of uh, grassiness. Uh, you know, I would definitely suggest drinking this beer ice cold and then drinking it uh, a little bit warmer as well, just, just to appreciate both sides of that coin. Still though, uh, the, the major hot flavors that we're getting are that peach, guava, you know, the kind of softer, softer kind of, softer stone fruits, like I say. The malt profile is amazing. I, I wish I wish I knew what it was. Um, I think that my assumptions earlier on are completely off. Uh, you know, I, maybe there is Munich in there, maybe there isn't, maybe there is crystal, maybe there isn't. I don't know. I don't know what's in this, how they've done it, but um, 
the, the grain flavors, let's say, the malt flavors uh, are amazing. Uh, just super sweet. And like I say, that, that chocolatey edge, um, which may surprise you in a beer like this, just gives you a real good yardstick uh, to compare everything to. Um, if I'm gonna rate this, you know, the brewery say it has a bitter hiss and that it'll squeeze your senses. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think that it is bitter at all. I don't think that, I mean, maybe that was just marketing because of the name, but I think it's bitter at all. I think if anything, it's underbittered. Um, so as I rate this, it's gonna pay me to do it. On a scale of like zero to I English IPA, it's probably a six because it's not that bitter. Um, and you know, those grassy flavors from the, the hops are kind of understated, but as a beer, God, I really love this. So this, this beer for me right now, maybe it's because it's my, uh, my first one of the day, it's going to my head. Um, as a beer, this is probably like a, an eight and a half for me right now. It's really, really good. Um, so I definitely suggest you go out. Uh, I got this from Morrison's for I think one pound seventy or something like that. Definitely head down to Morrison's. Definitely grab one. Um, and as you do so, put on the song "Bicycle" by Queen. Not only is that an amazing song, a great song, and a fun song, um, it pays homage to that massive, massive cycling journey that the founders of this brewery did. Uh, before they met and before they could bring us this delicious beer. Uh, normally I say go out to uh, your local bottle shop and find some, find one similar. Uh, this time, just just go make sure you grab one of these because I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, so until the next time guys, cheers.